Well, welcome everybody on this sad occasion as we remember our dear friend Jennifer Newbury, or Jane as we all knew her. A precious woman loved dearly by all of us. If you are joining us up in the other building, or if you're joining us at home, then we're really glad that you can be here with us in this digital way. And we're sad that you can't be here with us in a physical way. But uh, we know that uh, it is lovely that you're thinking of Jane and wanting to remember her at this time. My name's Tom Melbourne. I have the privilege of being the minister here at Central Villages Anglican Church in Lawson. I also have the privilege of knowing Jane very well. We've come together today to thank God for the life of Jane, to honour her, to mourn her, to support one another in our grief. There are so many hard things about today. There's feelings of loss, the reminder of the certainty of our own death and judgment. But there is still good news to be had, even on a day like today, that everybody who dies trusting the Lord Jesus will share eternal life with him. Now, that was certainly a hope that Jane shared. And so with faith and hope, today we're going to turn to God who created and sustains and loves us all and ask for his help in this very difficult time. What we're going to do first is hear from a couple of parts of the Bible. We're going to invite Susan and Claudia to come on up and they're going to be reading for us from Psalm 121 and then from John 14. Bible reading, John 14, 1 to 6. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The next Bible reading comes from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. And the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by light, by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and evermore. Thank you, Claudia, and thank you, Susan. God is at the centre of every life. He knows us, he cares for us. He's able to give us the comfort that we need, even in the deepest of grief. And so right now we're going to pray together, asking God that he would give us what we need at this difficult time. Please join with me. 
Our great God, you alone are the source of life. May your life-giving spirit flow through us and fill us with compassion, one for another. In our sorrow, give us the calm of your peace. Kindle our hope and let our grief give way to joy. In your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Help us to live as those who believe in the fellowship of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to spend some time reflecting on the life of Jane right now. And we're going to be beginning with Susan, Jane's sister, sharing a little bit. I got to thinking at the beginning of the week that I probably would have to say something at this service. Um, so I started early in the morning, perhaps on Monday or Tuesday, to write a little bit about um, Jane's life. It turned out to be quite a few pages, but this is well spaced, you'll be pleased to know. <clears throat> Where to begin? At the beginning, of course, in Sale, near Manchester, in the UK, Jennifer Jane Newbury was born on March the 2nd, 1947. I believe we were just coming out of one of the coldest winters in many years. Our Scottish gran was called Jane. I'm not sure if Jane, our Jane was premature, but she was always little. There was much rejoicing after her arrival, although it was in the war years, just after the war years. I don't remember the war years except that our dad was away at sea in the Merchant Navy as a radio officer. He came home when he could. We went to live with Mum's parents in Carrington, near Manchester. Jane was not thriving when she was young. She had been born with the cord wrapped around her neck and suffered breathing problems as she grew up. She became a patient of the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. Mum and Jane travelled by train to the hospital and I went with them in the school holidays. Jane made good progress and began school at five and a half years old. Our parents laughed when they had their first parent-teacher meeting for Jane. They were surprised because the, she called herself Jennifer at school and so did the teacher. She was still not very tall and unfortunately went through school in my shadow in the sports arena because I was so much taller. She enjoyed playing um, netball and was good because she was little and quick and she played centre. When I was in college, Mum and Dad and Jane came to visit me and Jane would proudly bring me a delicious and much welcome chocolate cake that she had made and iced herself. And also, our parents brought some decent tea with, with them because the college tea was terrible stuff. <laughs> After finishing school, Jane began working six years before her big sister working very confidently at the prestigious Harrods department store in the city of London. 
She's still in contact and talks regularly with her friend Mary in England, whom she met at her first job. She told me a little story after returning to work um, after a holiday with a really dark tan and they thought she was a new member of staff because she had changed colour. I have to tell you here, um, I had written something that was considered not politically correct, so I won't say <laughs> that she uh, looked like somebody from a different country. <laughs> one, of, one of the perks of the job was, of course, at Harrods, um, staff discount. Jane always loved a bargain. In the meantime, I moved to teach in New Zealand in 1965, and our dad passed away just six weeks after I arrived there. And he understood that it would be difficult while he was even sick for me to return to England. Um, Mum bought a house in the first high rise in Parramatta and Jane leased a house close by to us um, in North Bead. She still has friends there today. Jane proudly bought her first house in Hazelbrook in August 1982, which she referred to as the cottage. She travelled by train very early in the mornings and home late at night, white or Parramatta, enjoying the same friends' company and even having Christmas celebrations on the train at the end of the year. While working at the United Permanent Bank and then the National Mutual Royal Bank, which was then to become ANZ, Jane made many of her lifelong friends who still has her um, friendship today, some of whom are here today. Moving on from banking, she tried her hand at a plant nursery called Newports um, in Springwood, which gave her a good knowledge of plants, but sadly damaged her hands carrying heavy pots and started um, carpal tunnel problems and probably rheumatoid arthritis. After resigning from the nursery, Jane took up a job as a cleaner at Rudolf Steiner School in Hazelbrook, where she was loved by the children and appreciated by the teachers. She was always collecting bits and pieces for the um, children's projects. I also have to mention her Tupperware dealings and all the fun and friends she made during that time and the extra income that allowed her to travel and do house renovations. After eventually becoming entitled to an old age pension, Jane enjoyed volunteering for Meals on Wheels at Lawson and View Club, again collecting numerous friends along the way. I always enjoyed going to the View Club dinners with Jane and staying at her house afterwards, watching the shows that they were put on during the dinner. Going to the famous Cancer Council op shop at Katoomba, uh, we all know what an expert op shopper and garage sailor she was. I haven't mentioned Jane's battle with breast cancer, which she combated while still working in 1985 and then again in 2008. She was remarkable with her attitude and courage. She didn't, she didn't feel sorry for herself, thinking and saying, perhaps, why me? As an animal lover, Jane had many treasured pets, Brandy the Rottweiler, Cherry the Terrier, and when we moved over to the UK, she inherited our cat, Tinkerbell. With her kind heart, she helped many people with their animals when they went away on holiday and left behind Ted and Gracie. She has made some lovely friends through looking after dogs at her sometimes dog hotel. Jane has been a devoted 
and generous aunt and great aunt, and has been a great support to Kev and I and our family. I don't say this flippantly. This has been the life of a very special lady and a very special friend to many. She will be missed. And unfortunately, due to COVID-19, many were unable to say goodbye to her here today. Farewell, and may she have a corner in your memory. And as I said in the little poem for her 70th birthday, she did all the things she could in all the ways she could by all the means she could to all the people she could as long as ever she could may you indeed rest in peace my very special little sister jennifer jane newbury and rest in the arms of our lord jesus christ free from pain and sickness and worries. You will always have a special place in the hearts of your family and friends whose lives you have touched. Thank you so much, Susan, for sharing that. I'm going to invite up Jane's friend Leslie now to share some reflections on Jane, the friend. Tom, it's nice to see you with pants on. The last two, <laughs> the last two times I saw Tom, um, he was in hospital with Jane, and this handsome young man walked in and I thought, who's this? one of Jane's relatives, and it wasn't, it was the minister, and he was in board shorts and, you know, sand shoes. You can come back, Tom. The last time I was in this church was seven and a half years ago. I was sitting in this front pew on Christmas Eve. My father-in-law had come out from the United States, and he'd like, he asked to attend a church service. And... Bruce is a lovely man. He sings in the Seattle Choral Choir, and he's a huge baritone. And I don't know if anybody here was in the church that day, but when he started singing, he nearly blew the roof off. Jane and I collapsed in a fit of giggles, as Jane and I want to do. Luckily, Bruce was so caught up in the singing that he didn't notice. Jane and I had many giggles, lots of hugs and tears, over the period of our 15-year friendship. It was desperately hard not being able to cuddle her and sit with her during the COVID-19 crisis. But on May the 26th, which was the last time I sat with her alone, I brought over a bottle of Chardonnay. We sat down on the sofa and we cuddled and we kissed and she said, stuff it. <laughs> Jane was wont to say, stuff it. <laughs> so I met Jane when my children were going to the Steiner School and I needed help cleaning up a rental property. And I asked Jane to help out and we soon became firm friends. And we found out that Jane and I were born within 10 miles of each other in Lancashire. We also discovered that I was a client with Jane's at United Permanent and then at National Mutual Law Bank. It's is such a small world, isn't it? We were very different people. We had different belief systems, different political viewpoints. But we didn't let our differences get in the way of a brilliant friendship. We need to ignore those differences and celebrate what we have in common. And that's especially important today. As we all know, Jane loved dogs. But dogs also love Jane. We have a corgi called Max. I don't know if anybody's met Max here. And he absolutely loved Jane to bits. So often when Jane had come back from wheeling and dealing, which is her Jane speak for Meals on Wheels, you'd hear her car 50 metres away. And he'd look at me, run to the front door, look at me, run to the front door again. Is it, is it, is it Jane? And I had to wait till she came to the front door before I could open it, otherwise he'd have knocked her over. 
So while I was making a cup of tea, Max would sit her feet and I'm doing this, I've been doing this, he'd be telling all the stories that are going on, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And I'd give her a tea and we'd start talking, and you'd nudge her knee. I haven't finished. I haven't finished telling you my stories yet. Max caught coonhound paralysis, which paralyzes a dog, mostly from the neck down for about four months. But even though he was paralyzed, he was in great pain. And so he went for a doggy break at the doggy hotel. And while he was there, and he couldn't move, Mr. Teddy licked his ears out every day for two weeks. Mr. Teddy and Max were also firm friends. Jane's unique talents. Jane had a unique talent for breaking vacuum cleaners. <laughs> Anybody had one here broken? No. Three at last count. She also had a habit of buying me brooms. I kid you not. I now have four in various states of disrepair. Perhaps she thought I could fly them. She did call me a witch. And a toad. So, anybody else here get called a toad? Jane was an incredibly generous person with her time and worked tirelessly as a volunteer. She was desperate to get back to it after her stroke. Sadly, that was not to be. She missed all her other volunteers and clients terribly. Now, the highlight of our month was a hot date night at the Lawson Bowling Club. As a designated driver, I would pick her up. We would get into our ritual. I would buy a Chardonnay for Jane and a lemon squash for me. While she did the rounds, talking to her friends and delivering wool that she'd picked up from op shops to give to the ladies who knitted for charity. We would then settle down to our Chinese dinner and solve the world's problems. And then it was pokey time. And that's when the fun started. Jane and anybody else watching me would be in fits of laughter at my pathetic attempts to work things out. I was hopeless. I shall miss our fun. <sighs> Get a grip, Wesley. <laughs> I was on the mid-north coast escaping from my children. Sorry, Gab. <laughs> I know. <laughs> when Jane called me on the Monday to let me know that... Uh, sorry, Claire called me on the Monday to let me know Jane had passed. I had quite a few tears and laughs. <laughs> and promised to share a glass of Chardonnay when I got back. Anyway, the next day, when I was driving home, there was a beautiful rainbow ahead in the sky. And I said, if that's you, Jane, I'll have two more. And sure enough, there were two more in the space of the next half hour. And I said, ha, huh, what about 10? And so for the next two hours, there were eight more rainbows, I kid you not, all in different spots. Some were on the ground, some were in the clouds. And I saw them even when I wasn't looking for them. And I thought, here we go, there's going to be more. There were three more that made it 13. And I said, ah, you can't stop there, that's an unlucky number. Three more appeared in the next half hour. Gee, I miss you terribly, Jane. Hang in there, Leslie. I will miss calling you and saying, hello, lovely, it's a short one here. <laughs> Fuck off. I would feel so blessed that I could call you my friend and I was so lucky to have you in my life. <laughs> anyway, get a grip. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Thank you for your kind words about my legs. And for your kinder words about Jane, I feel honoured to be amongst those who got called a toad by Jane. I'm going to invite up Claire, Jane's niece, for one more eulogy. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm talking on behalf of a few other people to start with. Um, Thanks very much for being here today. It means a lot to our family and um, everybody that loves and cares for Jane. We really appreciate it. Um, first of all, on behalf of the VIEW Club, um, which Jane belonged to for 29 years, uh, Claudia Thomas has given me this and asked me to share this with you. 
When Jane moved to Hazelbrook 29 years ago, she joined Mountain Evening View Club at Springwood. This was the beginning of many new friendships. Jane was a very loyal and giving member with with her interest always at the heart of the Smith family, learning for life students, the Mountain Evening View Club sponsors and supports. Also contributing to the Smith family winter appeal, Christmas appeal and toy and book appeal. Jane took on committee positions at various times and enjoyed being involved with helping whenever she could at different fundraising events, with some being fashion parades, street raffles, selling Hawaiian shirts at the Carrington ukulele festival each February and various others. Most birthday and Christmas dinners, Jane would bring Susan to help celebrate these view events. When the club decided as view, um, when the club decided view in the community to supply um, crocheted blankets and beanies made by members and friends for the neonatal intensive care unit at Nepean Hospital, Jane took care of the food we collected at the monthly meetings for the parents staying at the hospital with their babies. Although not well throughout last year, Jane came with some of the members to make one of the deliveries to the NIC unit. We are so glad she was able to have the opportunity to be part of this very worthwhile need. Executive from National Office, National Councillor, Mountain, uh, Evening View Club and other View members extend their sympathy to Jane, to us, her family, and to you all, her friends. Jane will be very missed by all of the members at the View Club. Thank you very much, Claudia um, Thomas, um, the Mountain Evening View Club president. We appreciate it. I'm a bit of a messenger pigeon, I'm sorry, but these two people are trapped in Queensland, and if I don't give you this message, I, I don't want to know what happens. <laughs> um, hi, Jane. Talking to you from sunny Queensland like we did on that final Saturday. We met in Narendra in June 1972. You arrived on a coach from Sydney and me from Melbourne to combine on a 23-day uh, back to camping tour. We clicked. We became firm friends and for, 70, uh, for 47 years. Remember Ayers Rock? That's what it was called then, remember? I told everyone there would be no breakfast unless you rose early to watch the sunrise. Not being an early person in those days, you weren't really up to that, and you weren't going to bother. Still, you found, it in, you found out there was going to be an eggy bread French toast breakfast with bacon, your favourite. You were there, you were one of the first ones up for breakfast. Our friendship blossoms through all the bad times, but also the good times. Remember the garden party at New South Wales Government House in aid of the Heart Foundation. You had two tickets and you chose me to take, with you, take me with you. I came up from Melbourne and we got doled up. It was great to drink tea and eat cucumber sandwiches. In return, many years later, you came to Melbourne so that we could go to Oaks Day, the Ladies' Day at the Melbourne Cup Carnival 1987. I obtained two members' tags, so we got doled up once again and drank champers and ate canapes in the members' enclosure. Don't think we watched any horse races, though. My husband, Chris, and I visited for a few days at least every two years. Chris would stay with the dogs while you and I visited the op shops, the antique shops, and had a coffee. When you were ill on your birthday this year and... Claire, myself, asked uh, um, to text you our good wishes. I thought, no, I'm not using, no, I'm not using the landline and talking. You answered and said, oh, thank goodness. Without the texting, you are a live person and we chatted away. It was great. Neither Jane nor I do computers or mobile phones, but our landlines ran hot for nearly the whole 47 to 48 years. We spoke on that final Saturday morning and we both knew it was going to happen soon. I went outside for a walk to our lake and had a quiet moment. This is where I am now with a photo of you, me and Lorraine and, our light, and a, lighted can, a lighted candle. May all of your pain be over. Thank you for being a perfect friend. All my love, Pat and Chris. More information and, and love letters from Queensland. This is written with Liz's opposite hand. And when I opened it in the mailbox, our son thought it was from a child. 
because it's written in that way. So bear with me. I seriously don't know if heaven and I know you are there, Jane, has ever known a queen of Tupperware, stamps, garage sales, and one so knowledgeable on the subject of Wedgwood, heaven now has your expertise. I will try and be tough, Jane, but you have left a huge hole in my life. We walked together through thick and thin, and it was good. Special memories of you, Jane, and everyone with their memories of love, laughter, tears, even sharing our anger. So special, my friend. You are lovely and will be remembered in our 40 years of friendship. You were the only one to ever get away with calling me Lizzie. I love you and admired you and thought you were a spunky, courageous lady. I thank you, Jane, and even though you are at peace now, still my trusted, dearest friend, we will meet again. Take wings and fly, Jane, your dear friend, Lizzie. Um, it's extremely hard to stand here and see you all because the last time we got together was um, for Jane's 70th birthday just over three years ago. Uh, the birthday present that a lot of us contributed to was a train ticket to the Indian Pacific to WA. It meant a lot to her. As the train steamed into Lithgow Station, after Patricia dropped her off and probably had her ear talked off the whole way to Lithgow, she felt like a princess as Jane, the only passenger that it picked up in Lithgow, as they said, Jennifer Newbury, welcome aboard, madam. As I have gone through photos for today's display, I saw over and over just how much, of, of how much fun she really was. Always up for a good time, a laugh, a sneaky beverage, a cheeky comment. I apologise if I've got anybody's names wrong and dates wrong in the presentation to follow. No thanks to Jane for having only your first initials in her address book. <laughs> and so I have been on a Miss Marple mystery since the 6th of this month to try and track you all down. And thank goodness I did. Jane's actions were the true meaning of friendship. I think if the world did, lived as Jane did, as do unto others, then we would be in a better place, all of us. I have witnessed the reciprocation of friendship, care and love for returning to Jane in immeasurable amounts over the years and especially during her times of illness. The meals, the cards, the letters, the phone calls, dog feeding and endless errands. I have never seen someone who lives alone be never alone and who in the end was constantly exhausted from talking. <laughs> I think she mystified the doctors with her ability to talk for Australia and New Zealand and England and be on full oxygen with extremely limited lung capacity. Her Dr Linda McQueen, who Jane held in very high regard, sent her condolences saying she was a kind, generous and feisty woman and I will miss her. My family and I would like to thank the staff who looked after Jane in the last few months, the government agencies, and especially retired nurse Margaret Walsh, who Jane hired privately. She came into Jane's world through the best karma the universe could offer. Margaret went above and beyond helping with Jane's daily care. I hear she makes a brilliant cup of tea also. She always had time to put the world right with Jane. We laughed on the day Jane passed away because Margaret had even, even been ushered off to the ATM by Jane to get herself some money out so she could pay herself for that morning. Jane's fair, meticulous, honest and organised character always shone through. Jane's friends were exceptional help dropping off nourishing meals. Leslie, you're one of these people. Juanita, uh, Claudia, Chris, Katrina, Flo, friends from church. And I'm sure there are many others. If I've missed anybody, I'm sorry. Her freezer was fu full with nutritious meals and I'm sure they kept her going. You mountain folk up here are such a tight and caring community. You really are the best. Thank you to the community of Jane's church friends and especially Tom the minister. You have even welcomed our little boys on multiple Sundays when Jane had cared for them on a weekend when we ran away and allowed them to swarm upon your delicious morning teas. Tom, your love and support of Jane organising today and especially on the day she passed away was comfort beyond this world and was an honour to witness. 
Neighbours Kate and Rob and Pearl have been so supportive to Jane, feeding her dogs in the last weeks when she was in hospital and checking in on her. These are neighbours and friendships that have gone over more than 25 years. Again, providing that supportive network that Jane just kept going as long as she did, and that's why she kept going as long as she did. Kate and I, her neighbour on the left, got upset together when I dropped into Jane's house last week to find some photos. Kate said, it is so, so quiet. There is no yelling. <laughs> Jane isn't yelling at the cricket or the tennis or the TV's blaring, and there's no dogs barking. I miss her so much, she said. Going back to her house was really tough. As Leslie said, not hearing her yell out, hello, lovely, was the hardest of all. Finding photos dated and labelled, anything else for that matter of fact in Jane's house, always labelled. Jane's house was easy to find things in, neat as a pin, everything labelled in its place like a little doll's house. My husband wishes that that was actually a family gene. When her friend Katrina was giving her emergency first aid last year on her eye, Jane was calling out directions to first aid kits and everything else around her house, even while blind. Our boys will treasure her little toolbox, and I promise you, Aunt Jane, all the things will go back in. <laughs> Won't it, please? <laughs> it was lovely witnessing Jane as a great aunt with our sons, Wim and Rowan. I know during her younger years, my brothers Andrew and Peter and I often tested her patience and I bet she probably drove back up that mountain and was really glad she didn't own us. <laughs> I once announced to her when I was in year 10 that I was planning to leave school. She said, oh yes, and what will you do then? I said, oh, I'm not sure yet, aunt. She abruptly replied, I rest my case. <laughs> she told it how it was. As a mellowed great aunt with great nieces who will always remember playing in her fairy garden as they called it and looking in at her crystal collection and looking at her shiny gems, our little boys will remember snuggling on her lounge with multiple dogs, a pizza, a lemonade while watching an animal movie followed by stuffing themselves with lollies and no one gauging how much you've eaten. And yes, this person at the front might have thrown up twice over this. They recalled this as an awesome weekend. Aunt Jane even trusted William to make them all cups of tea. Jane's generosity to our family has been endless. Organising car loans when she worked in the bank, propping us up in times of big bills and medical emergencies. She always offered us to help out. As you all know, she was the queen of garage sales, as been mentioned many times. If you had stuff you wanted to get rid of, Jane would magic it away for you. If you needed something that Jane would ne that you needed, you would announce, and she would say, I found it in my travels. Lovingly purchased gifts with things she thought my dad would also want to try and fix. She used to drop off some stuff for Kev to fix, and I bet she's laughing at you still, Kev. On to the Tupperware, I'm sure, as we said, three quarters of the people here have their kitchens decked out by Jane's Tupperware. It is the best. As much as it falls out, you've got to organise it. If Jane didn't teach you how to organise it, I can tell you. If you didn't purchase it through her, then you are a traitor. Uh, I remember rightly, if I remember rightly, she was supposed to be uh, honoured for 50 years of service in Tupperware, but ended up being overshadowed by the royal visit of Prince William and Kate, which didn't impress her at all. Uh, Joan, Jane joked for many years that her ashes would be put into Tupperware. Only recently she told my mum that she had decided that Ridgewood would be much classier. And so it will be. She had much delight in telling my husband Paul when she met him for the first time nearly 20 years ago that he, le that he would be and I would be left all the precious Wedgwood. 
She roared with laughter after seeing his puzzled face when he asked, what do you do with it? <laughs> Why, you admire it, Paul. These are my treasures. <laughs> I will miss your humour the most, aunt. Even with having breast cancer twice and multiple operations, last year when I took you to an MRI appointment about your eye, I had to go into a tiny cubicle with you and your walking stick because you couldn't see and help you get changed into a gown. Having not experienced it with this with her before, I said to her, how do you, I looked in the mirror and I said, how do you still have those great perky boobs and that trim waist? <laughs> she looked stunning. Blind, but stunning. She laughed and said, oh, my breast surgeon told me I have dense breasts. And I said to him, well, it's better than having a dense personality, isn't it? We stood there in the tiny cubicle laughing, or losing it, as she would say, and trying not to fall over and looking at her hot body in the mirror. Jane's friends extended to her friends in the dog hotel, as we've mentioned. Although we met your dogs more than we met you, because you guys were always off on holidays, I know that her friendship and contact with you and her ability to run her black market doggy daycare always gave her a reason to get herself sorted. Katrina and Flo, I hope, Midget, your poodle's anxiety is going better now. No, seriously, you have all appreciated and, ad, appreciated and devoted um, your time to her and also appreciated her devoted animal love. But Jane appreciated your friendship more than anything else and loved writing when your dogs were arriving in her diary. Her friends at the Lawson Bowling Club and the Chinese restaurant will miss Lady Jane as they knew her. Her friend Tracy told her that the nickname Lady Jane that they'd all called her was actually named after a nudist beach in Sydney. <laughs> Jane laughed and said they will have to go there one day. They say she will be treasured, but I really don't think they will miss how tinny she was. She would clean up every week in the raffles, in the prizes, and come home with meat trays and vouchers. Thank you always for having a laugh with her and the shuttle bus drivers for getting her there and back safely after she'd had a couple of shardies. These are some Jainisms I'd like you all to try and adopt into your repertoire. Pratt. <laughs> Talking about politicians and TV presenters. Brilliant. Cups of tea or the cricket score. The bee's knees, the best you can feel or you can also look the bee's knees. Put the world right. Feeling better after a massive chat and offloading all your troubles. On my travels, where you found something. You slacked heart, what you call your fellow pommy friend. That's right, that's right. Your backup comment from her when you were having a rant and she was egging you on? Or was it just that she was listening on the phone but not really listening? That's right. When you're losing it or we've lost it, you're laughing uncontrollably. Oh, there's no hope. Trying to recover after and can't recover from losing it and laughing uncontrollably. And my favourite, oh, get a grip. Used with the umpire's decisions, someone's lack of fashion sense, or their lack of intelligence, or when you are being too emotional and the other person can't handle what you're going and saying. Friends have made lovely comments over the past couple of weeks, even including the ladies that she worked with at the TAFE during as an exam supervisor. Friends have said, she always had faith in her health and was so resilient. She remembered tiny details and completed tasks with detail. She looked after things carefully. Her dark brown eyes had a twinkle in them and with mischief. She was a genuine friend. She worked at her friendships and she worked towards her friends. Things from you I will try my best to live by, aunt. Be stoic. You never complained about your health and your illnesses and your troubles. 
Be generous. You were always generous. Have humour. You were still cracking jokes, even though you couldn't breathe while laughing about them. Last but not least, be an awesome friend. Stay in contact with people. Invest in friendships and enjoy them. And be loyal to your family and friends. I love you so much. I will treasure our memories forever. And thank you for always putting my world right. Thank you so much, Claire. Now, Claire has done the hard yards and gone through many photo albums and put together a slideshow for us uh, to uh, remind us of Jane and her life. Uh, if you're watching online or up in the other room, then we're hoping this is going to work, but the tech is always liable to have some gremlins in it. So if it doesn't work, we'll be popping it up on YouTube so you can watch it later on. Here goes.
technology. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I know she didn't mind technology. She, yeah, I'm assuming, because I believe she's having a lot of it. We've seen many of those things. This is Dunk Up.
<laughs> she was tupperizing that day. <laughs> Found it on my travels. These are from her kitchen.
My name's Ronald Say. No, you know Sue Helmton, I'm Jane's mum. Sister. Sister, I mean. What do you want to say about Aunt Jane? He was kind. She was kind, friendly. He'll, he'll be still, he'll be still, she'll be still there with you. For the love. I'll tell you a story, because when I ate too many food, I kept puking five times. We had to mop her up. Puking. And we went under the house and I kept knock, knocking, we went, knocking on the floor and saying, well, I'm over here poking out of holes. They, they moved her TV and fixed all the internet for her. I'm going to miss her. I love her. I love her. He will always be with me. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Uh, apologies for those watching online uh, that the stream cut out partway through. We'll pop that video up on our YouTube page so that you can watch the full one uh, a bit later on. Uh, right now, though, I'm going to invite up uh, Chris Kelly, who's going to be reading for us from Psalm 23. It's in your booklets. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We all know uh, that Jane was a woman like no other. That sharp wit, those world famous eye rolls, the caring laugh, the deep, patient, thoughtful love she delighted to lavish upon others. Uh, Jane was clearly an independent woman, you know, asking for help from others, no way, Jose. And, and yet at the same time, there were all sorts of ways that Jane showed that she knew deep down that no person is an island, that, that we need others in our lives. I mean, look at the friendships Jane enjoyed. She had more clubs than a caveman convention. You know, it, it makes me tired just thinking about it. Never had any children, and yet she is basically a mother and a grandmother to so many. Uh, her social calendar, as you know, was packed because it needed to be. There were so many people she had to keep up with. And, and we're talking real friendships here, none of this fake Facebook friend malarkey. Although I must say it was delightful to get a Facebook friend request from Jane in the last month or so as COVID forced her online. <laughs> Jane lived a life that was obviously dependent on others for friendship, for support, for fun. She lived life like it should be lived, really. And Jane's life was also a life lived clearly dependent on God. And Jane left only two instructions for this funeral. The first one, which made me chuckle, do not sing, abide with me. <laughs> Never one to hold back her feelings, was she? Um, the second instruction, please sing Psalm 23. Now, we're not allowed to sing Psalm 23. Thanks a lot, COVID. Uh, we are going to hear it a little bit later on. Now, Chris just read it for us. It's that psalm that you'll recognize because it gets read lots. It's just become part of our culture. And it's famous for a reason. Because this is a psalm that gets to the very heart of the relationship that we can enjoy with our God. That the relationship that Jane certainly enjoyed with our God. It speaks of the God who is not aloof, 
not distant, not uncaring, but who instead promises to guard his people like a shepherd guards sheep. Promise to, to walk with them through the dark, scary, imposing valleys and to give them confidence that it'll be okay in the end. This is a psalm where God says, if you want a home with me, you can have it. If you want my protection, you can have it. If you want to have the ability to not stress about the future, then you can have it. And, and that's a beautiful idea, isn't it? And it's an idea that becomes a rock-solid reality when Jesus comes along and says, I'm God with you. And God does want to care for you and does want to guard you and does want to give you an eternal home. So much so that God is willing to die for you to make that possible. This is something that Jane knew and something that Jane loved and something that Jane found great comfort and great joy in. In Jesus. Because the, the beauty of Christianity is not just an idea, it's a person. A person who knows deep down we're not as impressive as we tell ourselves or pretend we are in front of others and who says, I'm going to make up for your lack. I'm going to forgive what's gone wrong. It's Jesus that makes me love being a Christian and it's Jesus that made Jane love being a Christian. You become a Christian because you need this Jesus guy that what he's offering is something you can get nowhere else. As I've said, Jane was one of the most fiercely independent people I've ever met. But even she recognised that she could not possibly ignore this guy. We are going to miss Jane in so many different ways and for so many different reasons. And it's really normal for us to want to grieve at this point in time because the love that we experienced from Jane was so real and so good and having that love taken away from us is so wrong, isn't it? You know, de death is not just a good part of the great circle of life, you know, Hakuna and Matata and all that stuff. No, no, death actually stinks. And we know it to our bones that that is the case. Days like today make that dead clear. The Bible gives us permission to be sad about death. God says clear as day, we were not made for this. And so today I want to invite you to join along with me in thanking God that death does not have to be the end. That us saying goodbye today is only temporary. That Jesus' defeat of death will one day be Jane's defeat of death and can be yours and mine as well. No, knowing that promise doesn't take away our sadness but I think it does have the ability to transform it. To help us to see that maybe things are not quite as hopeless as they appear to be on the surface. Today we entrust Jane to the God who is good. And my hope is that you will feel confident to entrust your own eternities to the same God. I'm going to lead us in prayer. Holy and loving Father, you gave us life when you created us. And in your redeeming love, you have offered us new life in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you especially for Jane. Thank you for the years we enjoyed by her side. Today, Father, we entrust her to you. Loving God, we pray for Jane's family, Jane's friends, all of us who are feeling such a huge loss. Lord, when we cannot understand why things like this would possibly happen, when we're weighed down by grief, please uphold us in your love. Give us courage for the days ahead through Jesus our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite you to join with me in praying together the Lord's Prayer, printed on the inside of your booklets. together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come now to commit Jane's body to be cremated. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. In your keeping are all of those who have departed trust in Christ. We here commit the mortal body of Jennifer Newbury to be cremated, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died, was buried and rose again for us, and who shall one day change our mortal bodies that it will be like his glorious body. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, we have all been invited to uh, continue on after this in a couple of different gatherings. Uh, we can't gather here on site, but uh, Jane's beloved Lawson Bowling Club is able to host 40 of us. Is that right, Claire? Yep. 40 of us uh, can head over there. And uh, obviously there's more of us there than 40. And so uh, the Lawson Hotel just up here on the corner on this side of the highway is uh, happy to have tables of 10 uh, come along as well and enjoy catching up. So I'll leave it to all of you and you'll be up there as well to sort out where we go. Uh, but please do stick around and continue uh, catching up with one another and enjoying remembering Jane. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we've got some roses here and if you'd like to take one with you, we'll hand them out at the door. Right now, I'll invite our funeral directors to come down and while uh, Jane is carried out, I'll invite you to stand and we're going to listen to Psalm 23 as Jane requested. <laughs> 